Hi everyone, welcome to the QEOX channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today you're going to be talking about specification by example. We have been covered the whole the whole PDD approach since the beginning, uh, API testing, what what, what you're trying to solve in API testing and, and the usage of PDD. So and I've been talking about the advantages and advantages, and today you're going to be talking about uh, the specification by example. So if you haven't subscribed subscribe yet please do so hit the bell so you can receive the notification for the next videos so let's start so we're going to be talking about specification by example today right so basically how you can write a, a better scenario how you can you can uh, you can write your actual scenario right so what is a scenario scenario is a concrete example of a business rule a scenario uses concrete examples to explain abstract ideas um, and I'm going to give examples uh, for those in a bit so how it's a format of a scenario you're going to have a given which is a precondition giving you have something when which is an action when you do something then you expect something then I expect something to happen So here is a concrete example. Given I am on a system, when I log in, then I was able to access it. Great. Seems pretty straightforward, right? But what system I'm talking about? And which area of the system I am on? Who accessed it? Was it an admin or not? And what happens when a user logs in? So you can see that it was too simplistic, right? Don't tell you much. Let's see another one. Given I am on the login page, when I log in with an admin and I give an admin and I put in quotes, and this is going to be sent to the code, uh, then I should see the message of user successfully logged in and the username must appear on the right side of the menu. So this is a little bit better. Now I know that I'm on the login page. Now I know who has access, who is accessing accessing that. I also know what happens. You should see some sort of message, and the username must appear on the top right corner. Great. We can improve a little bit further right now, right? Do we really need this here login page? Give I am on the login page. What if I change it like this? When I log in with the admin, admin gmail.com, then I should see a message of user successfully logged in and the user must appear in the right side of the menu. So in the previous one, we had uh, given I am on the login page, right? But for you to log in, for you to log in, most of the time you need to go through the login page, right? Unless your system has more than ways through to log in. You could log in. Uh, a specific page you could log in uh, some system has like a, the user and the password uh, form uh, in the menu somewhere so you can have various ways to log in so maybe if, if that's the case they make sense but if there is if there's only one way to log in then this is going to be fine as well when I log in you already know how to log in of course your code needs to know what's the login page needs to know how to access but when you say I log in, you already know that you need to log in. You need to say that you are in the login page. We can improve a little bit further because here I'm using the actual data of uh, of the admin. Do I really need the data? Maybe this could be in the code somewhere, right? And I can change this to when I log in with the admin user, and the rest will be the same. So the difference is in this one I still had the email, and this one I just say it's an admin. My code needs to know how to which user is it's an admin you might need to create that it might already there it might be already there but i don't necessarily need to tell which admin user it is unless that's a very specific one right maybe you, you are testing that an admin user does not have access to some specifics that another admin user uh of another admin user specifics data right maybe an admin user should only uh, be able to be constrained to a specific group, 
right? And that one is constrained to another group. So you, you want to check that admin user for group one does not have access to the group two. Maybe that's the case. Then you, you got to tell which you got you, you got to tell which admin it is. But if that's not if that's not the case, then you don't actually need it. Right? The code would be in your test. Uh, this is this is what I meant related to one of the things that I meant related to using Cucumber as a data-driven uh, approach. Great. All right. So how we can specify better, right, our stuff? So what to specify? Now, we want to answer the questions: How does the system behave? We want to describe what the system does and not how it does. So here's a, here's an example of how the system does it. So this is exactly how the system is doing it. Given I open Firefox, when I open the website Amazon.com.br, uh, when I select the search and I type smartphone and I click the search button and I click on Apple in the brand filter, then I should see only Apple products. So this is a very step-by-step -step approach, uh, uh, like a testing testing script approach. But this is not what you want, right? We, we need to map the business. So let's take a, a deeper look. Do you really need to tell which browser you need to open unless it's a very specific scenario to a specific browser or something? But do you need to say it's going to be on Firefox? Do you need to say specific the website Amazon, right? If you are working on a website and you are working on Amazon, you don't actually need to tell that it's the Amazon website, unless you are a consultant that you are hired to test all the e-commerce in in Brazil. So you're going to tell which of the Brazilian e-commerce you test. So that would make sense. When I select the search, right? When you select something, right? Do you really need to tell that you you selected, right? If if it changed the way that you search, if it changed the way that you selected the search, then you're going to have to change your scenario. You don't necessarily need to say that you selected the search. And when you type smartphone, maybe, right? You can do a search by clicking somewhere on smartphone on, on, that has a smartphone, also not necessarily typing. If they also change, your scenario is broken. And you click, uh, yeah, and there was the type, and then you click on the search button, and then you click on the Apple in the brand field. Now you, you're telling specifically what you need to do, like a, a, a very step-by-step -step approach. And you click the button, maybe the button is now a hover. Maybe the button is now a hover. Maybe the button is, is different. Maybe you are using the keyboard. Right? Then I sh then I should uh, should I see uh, sorry typo then I should see only Apple products. What if you're talking about access accessibility? Somebody is going to be hearing, not seeing. So, right, so many steps here. So let's change this scenario into a more specification by example approach, talking about the business. So now let's go to when I ser search by smartphone and I filter the result by Apple, then I only then now I then only Apple products are shown. So when I search by smartphone, if you're testing the Amazon website, you are an Amazon employee, you don't need to tell that you, you log into Amazon BR unless you have multiple Amazons. Right? Maybe you are working on you have you are you are testing all Amazon, like you work on Amazon, you're te testing BR, US, uh, UK, then maybe it would make sense for you to say when search for smartphone on Amazon BR and filter the result by Apple, then only Apple products are shown. When you say filter the result by Apple, I'm actually encapsulating this whole thing here. When I search by Apple, then you are just saying that you selected the search field, you typed something, you clicked the button, and you saw, you searched. So you have, you have one 
thing here, right? You have one thing here saying search, and you have another one thing here, filter result by Apple. Now we are saying at this actual point, but in one line, we actually did these three things. I don't need to specify those three things. I don't need to explicitly tell those three things. This is not a testing script. Reading these is like, what is the actual object of this test? What, what am I, what is this scenario is doing? I'm not really sure, right? So, so many steps that you need to figure out what's going on, right? And you're going to have multiple of these. It's going to be even a polluted file. So now we have one little, one three line thing. When I search and I filter, then I apply products, then uh, Apple products are shown. What are you testing, right? Uh, you're also going to have the title, but basically you can see that you're testing the search and the filter, right? You're searching and you're filtering, right? That's, that's very clear, right? So this is, I don't want this video to be bigger, so I'm going to stop this video right now because we're going to now be talking about Gherkin, right? And Gherkin is in the, in the next video. And Gherkin talks about, uh, I'm going to be talking about how we can actually use the language Gherkin along with Cucumber to write your scenarios. And we, we are going to go into the specifics of, of how you can you, you deal with data, how you can deal with tables, how you can deal with the various options that Cucumber has. So, yeah, so that's basically, uh, thank you for watching so far. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Mark the bell so you're going to receive the notifications. And I see you on next video. Thank you.